This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1458, The Moment, and The Gift, both by Casey Main of CaseyMain.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome to the podcast where I simply read blogs to you for free like a gigantic ongoing audiobook with many different authors. Today's post being from Casey Main, author of I Gave Up Men for Lent. That's her story of her search for meaning. Not a book just for women, by the way. It applies to all of us. But I'll keep this intro nice and short for the Sunday episode, so let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. The Moment by Casey Main of CaseyMain.com I realized something while writing the other day. I was working on an article, only a couple paragraphs into it, and I reached the moment, an exciting point when I'm able to fully conceptualize what I want to say from specific arguments to the entire theme of what I'm writing. It's like the whole piece flashes in front of me. I can see it, almost feel it. I experience this a lot with writing. I get an idea for an article, and when I sit down to put my thoughts on paper, I start, albeit sometimes slowly, to get into a flow of sorts. A couple paragraphs into that flow is when the moment usually arrives. Suddenly what was once a fuzzy idea is now a fully formed article, complete with all my thoughts eloquently expressed, flashing through my mind. You know this moment, it's not unique to writing. It can happen in any aspect of life. We have an idea or a goal or a dream, and if we entertain it enough, we can imagine exactly how it could come to fruition. It's an incredible moment, like a glimpse into a future we now know is possible. But it has a caveat. For not long after that moment comes its counter moment. In writing, it's the moment when I can see, again, almost feel, the struggle I would go through to sort through my thoughts and make sense of them onto paper, to choose all my words and structure all my sentences to make those imagined eloquent expressions real. I know I can do it, but suddenly I'm acutely aware of how hard it will be, how uncomfortable it will be, and a little voice inside me starts saying, just come back to it. Recently, I was listening to a podcast that talked about Newton's third law of motion. For those who need the reminder I did, Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So it makes sense. The moment, while it only takes place in our minds, is still a significant action, a mental leap from vague idea to feasible future. It's only natural that it have a counter moment, an equal and opposite realization of how hard it will be to get from our present to our desired future. One glimpse of the work and the frustration we'll go through to bring our idea into the world, and it's enough to make us not want to do it, to put it aside for another day, to save it for later. But saving things for later is dangerous territory for an idea. We may think a lot in the future, but we live in the present. And ultimately, our present self wants to live the easy life, the comfortable life. The present self doesn't want to push through all the struggles and frustrations to make dreams a reality. No, the present self wants to pawn that off on the future self. There's just one major flaw in delegating things to our future self. We never actually live as that self. When the future moment we tasked with our idea arrives in the present and it's time to move forward, all those same fears and struggles are still there. And once again, our present self has to decide to push through or punt again to the elusive future self. We tend to put things off until later, but too often, later never comes. Or when it does, the energy behind the original idea is gone. Having been defeated by its counterpart, the moment can get lost. So how do we persuade our present selves to push through and not punt? Perhaps the answer lies in another one of Newton's laws. An object in motion stays in motion. Maybe it's just a matter of realizing we are already moving towards what we want. Having the idea, entertaining the idea, and seeing the idea as reality has already set its future in motion. We just have to stay out of our own way. Because it's not so much about struggling and pushing through the entirety of the counter moment, but rather understanding that progress is always only made one step at a time. Our present self is free to punt almost everything about an idea to our future self, almost everything, all but one step. That's the only thing the present self ever has to manage, taking one small step. Our thoughts will always venture off into the future, which seems far away and full of resistance, but our lives are always lived in the present, where we can only ever take the next step, and where the only resistance is choosing not to. The Gift by Casey Main of caseymain.com. 
At 34 years old, I found myself jobless and living with my parents. From the outside, it easily looked like another failure to launch story, but really, it was a third life crisis story. I was making the ultimate leap of faith, leaving my successful corporate career to pursue my dream job. With a serious drop in income from six figures to zero figures, I had to significantly cut expenses in order to stretch out the money I had saved, and my parents were willing to house me until I got back on my feet, or rather, until I got up on my new feet. It was an adjustment for all of us. I had to get over the ego blow that I was living with my parents at my age, they had to get used to their nest no longer being empty, and we all had to accept the inherent decrease in privacy. To add to that, they had recently downsized from the large house I grew up in to a condo at the beach. They were in a transition period as well, settling into retirement. It was a stage of life where they were supposed to be caring for their grandchildren, not one of their adult children. But there they were, not just allowing me, but helping me move back home. We had our fair share of hysterical moments, like when my mother, not knowing I was there, stormed out of her bedroom, fresh out of the shower and completely naked, frantically looking for her coffee. There were bonding moments like standing in the kitchen talking about our days or waking up early to watch the sunrise with my dad. And there were trying moments as we all learned how to navigate each other's schedules, moods, and bad days. But my favorite moments were the smallest ones. My dad's excited, hey, every time I walked in the door, the sounds and smells of my mother cooking dinner and saying goodnight to them both as I headed off to bed. I see now that it was a gift of time, time spent together as adults. But more than that, is a gift of perspective. So often as we get older, parents and children alike, we struggle to understand each other. The shift from living together every day to catching up every so often brings a certain level of distance and inability to close the gap as we move through our different stages of life. My parents and I were given a rare, intimate glimpse into each other's current stage. Time to see, understand, and appreciate the transitions. Time to close the gap. If there's one thing that moving in with my parents in my 30s taught me, it's that life is always going to bring transitions, changes, and different stages. And it's all too easy to view certain times as embarrassing, scary, or uncomfortable. But if you look hard enough, you can always find the gift in them. You just listened to the posts titled The Moment and The Gift, both by Casey Main of caseymain.com. That should do it for today and I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together will optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.